Shall we turn to the town? Sure. Um, the recent um, noise about CVS coming into the Grand Union space right. um, sort of indicated, and, and I don't think this Nantucket is unique in this respect, but it sort of indicated a lack of forward thinking and a lack of forward planning. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's endemic to municipal government or is a particular problem in Nantucket. I mean, the turnover in municipal government, the lack of continuity, the lack of people who are really trained in that sort of thing um, may be an issue, but I, I just wondered what your thoughts are on, on this and how, how, if at all, Nantucket could do better in trying to anticipate some of the things that, that are happening and changing, impacting the environment of the of the island. Right, I mean, I guess you're asking almost, almost asking the wrong person because as you rem remember um, a number of years ago, I don't remember exactly how many, we began um, a push for downtown revitalization right. um, from me, organized the mm. committee, very concerned about that whole footprint down there and um, we went through a lot of work with a lot of great stakeholders, individuals, um, came up with a plan that was not intended necessarily as a, you know, I know there was a lot of pushback on sort of the architectural features, but ultimately the plan had... Are you talking about downtown revitalization or are you talking about uh, Wilkes Square? Well, Wilkes Square came out of the downtown mm -hmm. revitalization committee, mm -hmm. so the two are kind of linked mm -hmm. in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. The Wilkes Square proposal, like I said, may have had some, um, you know, uh, issues in terms of how people saw it, but what we did there I thought was pretty remarkable for municipal mm. thinking, frankly, and, and what we did there was to, to ask questions about zoning, um, knowing that we don't own the property. I mean, it's one mm. thing for the town to get in front mm -hmm. of issues where they are actually the act, you know, the, they're the owner or, or they're, you know, sort of the stakeholder. But when we talk about a uh, track of property like the end grid property, um, mm. Grand Union property, mm -hmm. where we're not the, we're not the owner, um, we have to do things creatively that says to the owner, let's make this in your interest and in the town's interest to take a certain course. And we did come up with some plan there um, mm -hmm. that in integrated things like zoning changes, uh, streamlined zoning, um, things of that nature that would have made it um, attractive for a developer to say, okay, maybe a piece of public space is also critical here, mm -hmm. or if you want to have some say over what actually functionally goes in here, you know, do we have too many restaurants? We ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Do we have too many, you know, um, facilities, retail facilities, things of that nature, and how, how are we going to balance some of our issues? Um, unfortunately, in my opinion, the whole process got a bit hijacked by the whole concept of the parking garage. Mm -hmm. And while we tried really hard to keep one model being with the garage and one without, um, the parking option then took on a life of its own. There was a town meeting article. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, a lot of energy from a certain quarter that said this is just a Trojan horse for a parking garage, and which it wasn't. And unfortunately, in that case, mm -hmm. when it came to the board of selectmen, you know, um, it was not given the energy it needed to to go on and to keep on top of. Um, mm -hmm. As far as um, the committee it was a short-term committee, um, it was put in place to. to um, to take a look at this. Um, the other recommendation of the committee was to look at the Business Improvement District mm -hmm. as an option. Um, part of what's going on currently with Remain taking a sort of look at mm -hmm. this is part of that. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of hoped the Chamber of Remain might pick up on some of that as well. Um, there's a lot of leadership need as far as the town is concerned that aren't, is not necessarily just municipality mm -hmm. and you know one needs to look at the chamber. But who um, in the town well. was sort of responsible for or is responsible for moving the Wilkes Square project forward or some project in that neighborhood? Well, I can assure you right now Andrew Worse and I are back at it mm -hmm. so um, the you know these the the issue with CVS um, gave renewed energy to turning around and saying, okay, we're shaking this off, we're dusting it off, we're mm -hmm. going back to the discussions of what can happen here. Um, we still don't own it, right? right? Um, but we, we want to talk about um, a couple of things. One, there's there's been some consideration by the planning board to look at um, uh, taking our non, uh, for lack of a better word, 
non-chain store um, mm -hmm. provision and strengthening it, which I think is very important. We sort of learned a lesson. Um, the other thing we're, we're looking at, Andrew and I at least, uh, are starting to talk about is some of, some of the, th the recommendations that came forward with respect to zoning, um, talking with the owners about possibly what can we do as a town down there mm -hmm. to have you sit at a table with us. Um, the, the tank farm is a big issue and uh, we'll be having a meeting on Tuesday of next week about the industrial property out mm -hmm. at the airport. And key to that for me is getting the tank farm out of the Winthrop property. So uh, again, making it much more attractive for mm -hmm. Winthrop to, to sort of deal with us, um, talk to us about things they may do for the town. So, Is there any way that the, the tank farm can, in downtown can in essence be shut down? The tank, oh, with the tank farm? Uh, you no, know, can it, the tank farm, can that property's use for a tank farm be ended other than through zoning? Are there other, oh, which, yeah. which of course couldn't be retroactive? Right, we, we need a place for it to go, mm -hmm. and we have that place, mm -hmm. that's the good news. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've, when we've negotiated the lease there, you know, in terms of um, at least the town piece of mm -hmm. it, we've made it shorter than typical, so that's good, so that there'll be, you know, um, we do have some flexibility there. So mm -hmm. I, I can foresee that if we put our heads to it, we can really um, try to get that moved out of there uh, mm -hmm. in the shorter term than people might envision. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I hate to say how many years because mm -hmm. you know how these things go, but ultimately, you know, if we didn't have a spot for it, I'd be more concerned, but we do, and it needs to go. It really does. This brings me to the larger question. Is what uh, is, is the uh, form of town government that Nantucket has now the most effective form that it could have under the options that are available? Well, I have never... I mean, we, we can't write our own charter, obviously. I know, I know. I don't know. Sometimes I do think that, um, and again, this is only from the practical end in terms of my own um, playing, you mm -hmm. know, being part of the, of the picture. Um, I've not been part of the, you know, the studies and the right. different committees that have looked at this. But, you know, you can envision um, that a mayor would be, um, you know, a, a sort of form of government mm -hmm. that might be um, down the road not too far. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you talk to Libby Gibson and you talk to Greg Tiven, um, y you know, th they are um, painfully aware of how f different the town is today, mm -hmm. for instance, than it was even five years ago, certainly ten years mm -hmm. ago. Um, and, you know, as we become more complicated, uh, depending on, you know, the kinds of issues that we have to deal with, um, we have made the move towards a town manager, which I think is a key thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that, to me, is a step towards, you know, maybe a consideration of, an, of a different form. I'm not advocating for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that that's um, necessarily, you know, uh, tomorrow's decision, but I, I think you're absolutely right in asking the question that we don't want to ever get kind of behind ourselves. Well, one, one of the, as you know, one of the issues with the airport has been getting approvals for budget changes. Mm -hmm. And I did speak with the airport manager over in Hyannis and asked him how, if he needed to adjust his budget, how he could do it. Right. He said, well, we have a town council. They meet every month, so we can go to them basically whenever we have to. And, and the idea of having a legislative body that meets at once or at most twice a year for one day or two days um, has to have some impact on the efficacy of the government, I would think. Right. And, you know, again, it may be a phase, more of a mm -hmm. phased issue because one could see town meeting retaining a certain amount of authority mm -hmm. and control, but essentially giving some authority, particularly things like the airport, because when you deal with enterprise funds, mm -hmm. it's a business. Mm -hmm. How can you run a business? I mean, it's different than a <laughs> that's municipality. What that's right? what we've been asking. Exactly. <laughs> How can you run a business with, with that kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, incapacity, mm -hmm. decision-making happening the way it does? So, I mean, again, as we... As we on Nantucket know, not everyone in a municipality runs an airport or, um, you know, an elder a home for for elder services. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some particular needs here, a landfill um, that need water company or water company, mm -hmm. um, you know, that need you know different kinds of decision making. And maybe what we do is think a little bit about a middle ground mm -hmm. where we can have a representative group to town meeting perhaps mm -hmm. that does and is able enabled to make decisions. Um, because it is frustrating mm -hmm. to make a business run on a municipal model. I mean, it's, right. it's crazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> those are your words, <laughs> but I would agree. <laughs> it is, and, and you know, I mean, back in the day, I was, you know, I was, um, as you know, director of the community school, mm -hmm. and I bring this up as an example. The community school exists for the most part on the revenue that comes in from people paying for classes, right. and trying to juggle that with the school's municipal 
mm-hmm. based budget mm-hmm. budget has given me at least a tremendous amount of insight in how mm-hmm. it's apples and oranges mm-hmm. so you know I, I'm definitely there um, what else would you like to share with us in terms of the uh, you know what's going on in the town uh, are there any big initiatives that the uh, selectmen are talking about you know, we had the big beach program for example yeah, which is still going well um, and, we've got uh, some good ones coming up mm-hmm. actually that at least will turn some folks out we've got the taxi um, changes in that mm-hmm. um, um, going you know, to meters yeah possibly yeah possibly. Um, in terms of conversation we're also going to have the restaurant uh, uh, folks in we're talking about entertainment licenses mm-hmm. which you know it's it's you know it's important for uh, businesses to have that input right. we'll have a public hearing in early February on that matter um, the um, whole um, sewer septic question and what we're doing with Hummock Pond mm-hmm. what we're doing with Madiket, um those things are definitely um, um, happening and, and we'll be hearing more about those in the mm-hmm. upcoming months um, there certainly won't be any sleepy time here as far as the winter's concerned. When is the uh, consultant's report due on, on uh, Madiket? Um, I don't know exactly the date. Mm. I just went to the last sewer uh, meeting and they did a quarterly update for mm. us. Um, it was the week or so before Christmas. Um, and as far as like the, the general, what we're trying to do is um, to look at Madiket, but per se, but but also to look at the bigger picture. So, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces when you're considering uh, what to do a particular piece of the island mm-hmm. when you've got, you know, Hummock Pond and you've got this, the Surfside plant and, and things of that nature. But it will be the spring at some mm-hmm. point. Yeah, we'll, we'll hear more definitively. We need to. People are making decisions mm-hmm. about, you know, their own septic systems and uh, we don't want to uh, get in a place where too mm-hmm. many upgrades are required before we actually get together um, what we're going to do next. So, You could look in your crystal ball. Yes. I'm asking you to look in your crystal ball. Five years out, what right. would you say the issues of the day then will be? The, you know, it's funny on Nantucket, I, I do think water quality will always remain mm-hmm. um, one of those issues. And again, we just talked about the, the you know, septic versus right. sewer. Um, you know, it's just sort of... Also saltwater quality. Saltwater well. quality, right. I mean, I, we can't get away from mm-hmm. it. It's our bread and butter. Mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately, that's, you know, that's what we're going to be, be looking at. We're so much more... And, and, and I think it sort of shows. I was just going to say how fortunate we are that people thought about it before. But I think it's because it's been forced on us mm-hmm. from a long time ago mm-hmm. to take a, take a good hard look at what we're doing with that. Uh, so I, I don't think that it's going to go away. Municipal facilities. I mean, I think mm-hmm. that we'll be we starting to now look at, um, you know, what we need to do with respect to not only space needs, but the aging of our facilities mm-hmm. from the town building to our island home. Um, you know, those are the kinds of um, uh, issues that not, nobody can get away from in terms of how um, municipalities mm-hmm. work. But certainly we've got a few um, building issues that are um, right on the Right on the verge of being um, critical, <laughs> I would say, <laughs> mm-hmm. and maybe pass up. Well, is the Mooney building going to be sold, or has that not been decided yet? Um, uh, it. Um, I mean, I guess it has to be approved by town meeting, or was it maybe? I can't remember. Yeah, that. I'm trying to remember too, but I, it's on it's on the course. Yeah. I just saw something recently that took it one step further mm-hmm. along. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, we're getting there with that. So so certainly the facilities questions, um, you're going to hear a lot about in the next few mm-hmm. years, and um, and and again. That also may impact the corner that we spoke about to start mm-hmm. with. Um, you know, there has been talk about keeping municipal facilities downtown, and with the new FEMA regulations, it's unclear what the current town building can or can't do. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at that, but maybe there's another footprint for it. Um, you know, that's a that's at least a consideration. So does FEMA affect anything that happens? I assume it does. The FEMA regulations, anything that happened with the old. Uh Firehouse, police station. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, to me, it makes it. And again, I'd, I'd like to get more definitive in terms of things, but um, we it completely changes the conversation about is it you know what is the investment mm. in that building um, in terms of what the new regs are going to require uh, to get it up to a place that can be insured, mm-hmm. basically. So yeah, it's 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 definitely changed the nature of things. Um, so if you could. Uh, to close out, if you could pick one thing in your terms as chair of the board of selectmen that you're most proud of, what is it? That you know, that's funny. I um, have been very interested in a lot of different issues, but I think one of the most fundamental things that I um, uh, made as a goal and accomplished that touches basically every aspect of the town was um, a, was putting out to bid the town council mm. um, position. And ultimately, I know it was controversial at the time, and I'm not disparaging any group, but I, I do think that what we have in terms of um, council right now is is very important um, mm. in terms of cost savings um, across the board in, ter- in litigation and support. It's one of those areas where 
you, you know, you're never going to wave a flag about because mm. it's so integrated that it doesn't pop necessarily as far as um, a costing is a cost issue mm -hmm. or a quality issue is concerned. But um, I believe, and I'm proud to say that I've seen at least, in my opinion, um, a real upgrade in. Um, the quality of our advice, mm. but also in the cost, um, in, in terms of being being more manageable. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, you know, it's one of those things that is tough to do because mm. you know it was a a long history and um, and it was um, a very. And it's delicate still not going away, is it? <laughs> <laughs> never, no, never, never. <laughs> things never go away. But again, that that was. That's well, that's good. A that's highlight. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Dan. being with us. Thank you very much.